you did not marry the wrong person. Hang with me because a lot of people say they married the wrong person. My name is Judy Herman and I am the author of Beyond Messy Relationships, Divine Invitations to Your Authentic Self, but I'm also a psychotherapist and a speaker and a coach. And I wanna share with you what a lot of people believe and what I've heard in my counseling office a lot. <laughs> They married the wrong person or their first spouse was the wrong person and or their second spouse was whatever it is and they question themselves did i just marry the wrong person a lot of times you believe that but it's so not true the reality is you married the exact right person and i'm gonna share with you why i believe that and why it it is really gospel truth <laughs> i'm telling you but what I'm about to share also will help you get beyond the messiness of your relationship, okay? So here's the thing. We need to raise our level of awareness. So many of us get married when we're even before our mid-20s, and you may or may not know this already, but our brains are not totally online <laughs> until our mid-20s. So we likely chose a life partner very early in our age before we even have the, had the awareness, right, about what life is going to be like. In fact, I don't know if anybody really has that, no matter what age they are, <laughs> no matter what age that they fall in love and decide to get married and walk by, down the aisle and say, I do. Does anybody really know what life's going to be like 20 years, 30 years from now? You can have a vision of it and you can be more conscious and more aware. And that's a huge thing that we need to do on our human journey. But here, what here's what I'd like for you to know about how we end up or how we choose our lifetime partner. And if you are divorced, how did you happen to choose the person that you did? And they were drawn like a magnet to you. And how did you all even come together? Okay, this will be very insightful. So we have three P's. We have, we either pick, project, or provoke. Okay, number one, pick. We will pick a lifetime marriage partner, someone that we fall in love with, no matter what age we're at. There's this chemistry because we pick someone who is familiar to us. We pick someone with where in our family of origin, we learned how to do certain things things, we learned relationship patterns and relationship dances, and we, we will pick someone subconsciously that feels familiar, and yet there's ex excitement. So we'll take all the best of the best in our imaginations, and we're basically, we're kind of in a delusional state of mind in any kind of early romantic relationship anyway, because it's, there's like chemicals working on in the brain. It's kind of like having a street drug high, although I don't personally know what that's like, but I've heard a lot of stories, but basically you're under the influence of some high acting chemicals in your brain that make things look bigger than life. And you're blinded to a lot of things, right? But we feel this, we feel this, oh, this feels so right. It's because this person that you've connected with is basically on the same level emotionally than what the, as what you are, basically has some same dynamics, even though their family of origins may be very different than yours, but there's this familiarity in the relationship dances that you learned early on in your life. So number one, we pick someone that feels right and we have chemistry with, and it's pretty much subconscious. We're not even aware of this, but it just feels right, okay? Number two, we will project onto that other person after having been married or the relationship goes on and then there's conflict, we will project onto that person it's kind of like, you know, a movie we're watching on a screen and there's this, you know, in the old days, I guess the projectors <laughs> put the image on the screen. So we will have an image of that person of the way that they should be, or we'll have an image of the person because of the familiarity and the picking kind of then reminds us of the negativity. So it's kind of like a pendulum swing, <laughs> you know, we can be overly um, in la la land, head in the clouds, or we can be overly um, negative. And this person, this human being that's different than anybody in your family will take on 
this projected image. And again, this is all subconscious stuff. So it, number one, we pick someone that's familiar. We will project things onto them, especially negativity and other things. And then we also provoke. So subconsciously, every one of us, we have gaps in our childhood. Maybe you don't even identify it as traumas, but we've all had stuff, right? We've all had maybe emotional neglect at times and perhaps, you know, other, but anyway, what we're trying to do subconsciously is we're trying to complete the past. And so we will project some things onto our spouse. And again, we don't know we're doing it, but we will act in ways that will set up rejection if we have been rejected early in our lives, or we'll set up some scenarios subconsciously and ways of being that, that invites abandonment because we had that in our childhoods. So these are just some deeper issues of why it's, it wasn't the wrong person that we married. It was actually the very right person that we married, but how to get beyond the messiness of the relationship, realize we needed that person in our lives in order to help us to be more aware, more alive, and to do our own growth work. And this applies to whether you've, you're have you in a very messy relationship right now or whether you're in a happy relationship right now. What The stuff that you've gone on, if you've been in a long-term marriage, it applies, right? There's this invitation to grow and to grow up. There's this invitation to heal. There's this invitation to thrive. And that's where conflict comes from. And it also applies if you have lost your spouse. Perhaps you've lost your spouse to death or to mental illness or to divorce. And, and we're quick to make some judgments around that, especially with divorce or any other kind of traumatic thing in which we have been abandoned or we have been cheated on or whatever's gone on to break up or, or dissolve the marriage. And, and really our words that we use about that can can be very damaging as well. I like to think of it, it was a it was a natural completion rather than a divorce because that person was not the wrong person that you married. They were the right person that you married for that time to raise your level of awareness of, of the areas that you need to grow in and to live your vibrantly authentic life. So if we change our perspective and realize that there is a bigger story, there is a bigger story than the, than the stuff you're going through, than the heartache you're going through, than the rejection and the abandonment or anything else you're going through right now, there is a bigger story. And we can change our perspective and we can see that this person was there to raise your level of awareness about your values and your and who you are and your purpose in life. So tune into that. 